Hey, Kaylin. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you once again for taking the time out to talk to us. Really appreciate it. Sure. Um. So first thing I need to ask you is, since the last weekend, how much has your social media exploded so far? Uh, it's been pretty good. Pretty good. Um. I got back on Twitter. Um. My Instagram's blowing up pretty good. Um. I haven't really been on Facebook though. Just kind of keeping it simple with that. Okay. Um. You've already fought Tiffany before, and you've raked up two big wins. Um, in terms of the impact, sheer impact of both the fights, which do you think ranks higher for you? Ah, uh, well, it's difficult to say because with with Tiffany, um, I think that win could have been chalked up to a bad matchup, as far as um, my wrestling versus um, a striker. But with this last one, I think it was it was just so um, dominating that um, there really was no way to chalk it up other than, you know, I just beat the crap out of her. So um, I think maybe last fight was probably more exciting for me to get that finish. All right. And can you also talk to, uh, talk to us a bit about your uh, training in Oregon and your days as an amateur fighter? What about it? Uh, your training uh, days in Oregon, training in Oregon oh. as well as your amateur days. Yeah, they were pretty. They were pretty good. I had um, I had an unblemished amateur record, so um, I went six and zero. A couple of them were kind of like really small shows, but I ended up um, getting. I got three, three belts, two at bantamweight, and then one at strawweight, uh, which was pretty exciting. Um, but I, I gained a lot of experience from that. The being an amateur, um, most of my fights went the distance as an amateur, so. I got a lot of cage time, a lot of experience, and then I just kind of learned how to grit it out and grind it out. All right, and when you were given the fight with Kay, what was the initial thought process that, that you know, uh, went into your head? Um, I, actually, initially, I was, I was scheduled to fight somebody else. Um, I can't remember. Her name was Brianna. I can't remember her last name, but anyways, about a week after I agreed to that fight, I get a call from my managers, and they're like, oh, she, uh, she already pulled out. And I was like, well, that kind of sucks, um, especially because I had gone through so many fall fallouts before in the last couple of months. Um, but so basically, I was like, well, whatever. Um, I don't. They, my manager said she 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 had pulled out, and then they told me, would you like to fight Kay Hansen? And I I had no idea who she was. So my response always to my managers is, um, yeah, I'll fight whoever. I don't care. I don't need to look anybody up. I don't need to make sure I can beat her, you know. So basically, I'm I'm just the type of fighter that if if I'm offered a fight, I'm gonna take the fight. I'm not gonna think about it. I'm not gonna try to pad my record. So, you know, I didn't even know she was 18 until, you know, a couple of weeks after I had accepted the fight, and I was like, oh, you know, like because I don't I don't spend the time looking into my my opponents like that. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> right, and if I remember correctly, you were. Uh scheduled to fight David Sora the, the last year, I guess, before that fight fell, fell, fell through? I think it was um, Brianna Van Buren. Brianna Van Buren, right. Um, so how I'm difficult... Just... Yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, sorry. Yeah, uh, so can you also tell us how difficult is it for a pro fighter to kind of have a different opponent, go through that camp, and then get a new opponent? Oh, it's really frustrating, but um, in my amateur career, it happens so often that um, it's kind of what you expect. You would think at the professional level, you don't have to go through that. Um, but at least I'm, you know, like I like I said before, it doesn't matter. I could train for one person, and and if I mean, there was one point in my amateur career where I trained a whole camp for one person. And within the last week, they changed the opponents three times, three different times. And I was like, whatever, just give me a body. Like, I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to miss all that training, that camp, that dieting. So, um, like, as for that, it, like, it doesn't really mess with me mentally. I don't really care. Just somebody, somebody who can make weight and, and who's, you know, conscious coming into the cage would be great. <laughs> <you know? laughs> all right. Now, talking about that mentality. Um, after the first round, you were totally dominant in the first round. Uh, so when that break came through, uh, what was going through your mind? Did you did you think, well, I have this wrapped up? What, what was going through your head at that time? Um, essentially, um, the plan, the whole entire game plan was to kind of stick her on the cage and to grind her down and find my window, find my opportunity. So I knew going into the first round that 
it, I mean, it was possible for me to find that window, um, but I wasn't too, I wasn't rushing it. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to take it to the ground immediately. I was just kind of, kind of basically I wanted to fill it out. And I had a really, really hard weight cut the day before. Um, it was probably the worst cut I've had in my life. So um, I think I was pretty exhausted. And I remember just kind of thinking like, just, just to fight smart and, and to do, to do things within reason and not to not to get ahead of myself, you know, like I never look for a suplex, you know, because that's <laughs> you're gonna end up getting in trouble right. trying to throw somebody, trying to force a throw, you end up on your back. So in my head, I just really essentially, I had no problem with making it a really boring fight. And I, especially coming off a loss, especially being how tired I was, and then um, with the weight cut, and I didn't, you know, it'd been a year since I'd fought, I didn't. I just wanted to be smart about it. So yeah. when the second round came, and um, I I don't even think I really realized that I opened her up when I opened her up um, on the eyebrow, but right. she went to go throw me the, like a judo toss. I don't even know what she was trying to do, but it, that, that kind of crap doesn't work with me. And I like paused for a second, and then when I watched the replay, but you can see me pause, and I, and I locked my hands up, and I was like, oh my God, she's giving me the suplex. <laughs> You know, I went for it. So definitely I had no intention of of uh, making anything in particular happen, but that window was so open that there was no reason for me not to capitalize on it. Correct. And as you said, when that uh, cut uh, came about, what went through your mind when you saw that blush just, blood just gushing out? I couldn't believe that the, the ref didn't stop it. After I knew when I, when I landed the suplex, I wasn't how hard, I wasn't sure how hard it landed. But um, that f the first initial 15 seconds of me punching her, she wasn't really, I didn't feel like she was intelligently defending. But the ref was just kind of like, well, you know, keep going. I, I forgot what he said. He, he told me a couple times, watch the back of the head. But a lot of the times I'd hit her and then she'd turn. So it would be kind of incidental. Um, but in my mind, I was thinking, I'm not going to stop hitting her until somebody stops this. Because there's no way. I, I had a feeling... What was it like? Four minutes and thirty seconds into the into the round, I was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not coming out. We're not doing another round." So I don't care if I have to break my arms off on this chick's face right now, but it's going to be a stoppage. So um, when I really started, pour, it started pouring out, and I was like, "God, he's got to stop it. He's got to stop it," you know. But I think it was a late stoppage for sure. All right, and uh, obviously that was the big highlight of the weekend. But we also saw a new champion being crowned. Um, did you get to watch that fight as well backstage? No, I didn't actually. Um, I had I went and did an interview right after that post interview, and I was in there for probably a good 10, 15 minutes, and then um, I got kind of sworn by a couple family members and friends, and it, I was just so excited that. But I heard that she dominated. She pretty much took that fight. Correct. Um, so that was pretty pretty cool. I'll probably go back and watch it when I have time. All right, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you was, after your you know, amateur career, uh, once you transi transitioned to pro MMA, you fought once in 2016, once in 2017, and once in 2018 so far. So uh, can you also tell us what happened between that gap from 2017 March till this year? So um, essentially, I was living in Oregon, and uh, before I took that fight, I knew I was going to be leaving Oregon, but I was um, in my last term of college. So I, w I was scheduled to graduate with my bachelor's degree in June. So I fought in March, um, and I kind of wanted to. I wanted to take that fight at that time because I knew, I felt in my head that that I needed to make things happen because I knew I was going to move and it was going to take even more time to get another fight, and I didn't want to be out that long. So right. um, I kind of forced that fight. Kind of forced um, taking that fight. I, in, in retrospect, I should have should have taken my time and, and been a little bit more smart about it just because of how much was on my plate and everything I was going through. So um, after I graduated in June, um, I moved, up, moved down to, to San Diego. I'm from San Diego, California. So yeah. um, then I spent really that the whole summer last year was with Alliance and I just got there. So they had to break me down and, and create me in their image. And they, you know, it was, it was pretty, I don't know, at times it was kind of depressing, you know, because um, 
like basically every day it was I was kind of just broken down every day there wasn't really a whole lot of positive feedback which is what you need to do Correct. to a fighter like me just completely we got it they watched me completely in their own image so um it was kind of discouraging at the time and then they I finally got to the point where they said hey we're ready to fight you you know because you have to build that rapport with your with your coaches your teammates and and they gotta know they gotta know you so I, I put the time in and and by the time it was it was about fall when I started looking for fights and trying to take fights I had um, three different fights fall through in a row um, I had one of them the whole entire card was canceled so I was like man it, it just must be cursed at this point but a couple of them I took a couple short notice fights um, just to get back in at 125 and and um, there, there are women who had a full, a full training camp, and they lost their opponent due to injury. And I'm like, I'll, I'll fight you, whatever. I'll step in. I'm, you know, I've been drinking and eating, whatever. But I'm ready, you know. And then they'd be like, No, we don't want, to, we don't want, we didn't train for her. And, and you know, I'm like, Well, that's, I don't know. I think it's kind of bogus when, when people do that. Just you know, get in there and scrap. But anyway, so I basically had a. a really hard time finding fights you know outside of Invicta. Invicta had been pretty booked up towards the end of the year so right. um, you know because they're always bringing on new talent and um, they got a lot of stuff going on um, so basically I was just patiently waiting for something to pop up and and uh, my manager finally finally hit me up and said we got you we got you on uh, the Invicta card Invicta 28 and I was like I was pretty excited and I asked him I was like a, at 115 and he's like yep and I'm like well I'm like spitting out my food as he's telling me this like oh god I got a I had a quite quite a ways to get down and then you know the water cut and everything so uh, but basically it was just because the universe didn't want me to fight that's how it felt <laughs> right and seeing just that how gratifying does it feel right now getting that sort of a victory last weekend it it it's what I needed. I was telling everybody this is exactly what I needed because you you get so um, deterred. You get you know you kind of get you start feeling a little unconfident and you know you lose a fight and then a bunch of fights fall through and and kind of making I don't know if you know this but living in Southern California is really expensive <laughs> right. and so I'm str you know struggling financially and. And the thing about training for a fight is that you it takes a vast majority of your day up. So trying to train for a fight and trying to make money and trying to find sponsors. And then I started I started going to EMT school. So I just threw a whole bunch of shit on my plate again. So um, it just it 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 was a huge relief, a huge relief just to to earn that and to um, to do it in such a fashion that people are still talking about it. Pretty excited. Yeah, and saying that, how difficult was it for you to fit an entire fight camp with, obviously, as you said, so many things going on in your life? How difficult was the training camp itself for you? Um, it was it was a different kind of difficult in a sense of like having like driving thirty minutes to the gym twice a day, or or sometimes I'd only do it once a day. I did a lot of um, my conditioning and and getting the conditioning for this camp. I did a lot of it on my own, just because. Um, it was easier for me to just kind of knock it out when I had the time instead of trying to go in and 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 fit everything into the schedule. So, but I did have a lot of support from my family and my boyfriend. I did get quite a few sponsors this round. So, um, um, I don't know. I just feel like I was a lot smarter about training. To uh, traditionally, I've I've just done you know the three to five hour work days working out and just murdering myself and and really with the lions there's um they're just a lot smarter about training and it's not you know kick the crap out of you every day it's, it's um it's great it was nice so it was, it was it was tough but it was a good kind of tough something that i can definitely handle right and uh, your story has been inspirational because you said you got into MMA because you were kind of trying to lose weight, uh, but then got hooked on to uh, mixed martial arts. So yeah, well, yeah, basically, um, I started training because of the, the guy I was dating at the time. He's actually my old coach. Um, I was so out of shape, and I was smoking cigarettes and drinking all the time, and you know, he's like, you're really into MMA, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun, you know, and. 
And then I, when I started doing it, I remember telling him, I was like, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to end up being really good at this watch. And he's like, I, you know, I don't know, like, you know, <laughs> within the first six months, there's, you know, you're just, I don't know. He, it was, it was funny to kind of show, show my friends and family and kind of the world because they had seen me and seen me as this, you know, this person who just liked to party and drink and, you know, and then I ended up turning into this savage and they're like, you know, like I swear, like six years ago, you wouldn't recognize me. And so it's been really cool kind of becoming the person that I've always wanted to be through mixed martial arts. Fantastic. And do you kind of also think that you find yourself at the right place at the right time because of what is happening with women's MMA at this point? Yeah, definitely. There's there's a lot of opportunity right now and there's a lot of opportunity and the, the talent pool really isn't that deep. Um, it's starting to expand, but I, I think as far as um, we still have a lot of women fighters who are one dimensional. Right. And, um, you know, you, and you can see that in the, ni the 1990s, the early, um, the early days of the UFC, you know, when, when everybody was, all the men were getting into it, a lot of those guys were one dimensional as well. And as time went by, you know, people started becoming more well-rounded. So I think we're coming into that. Um, part as women, we're obviously I think we're going to develop faster than than men's MMA did, just because they've already done it. They've already set the blueprint. So, Correct. Um, mostly it's just finding the women who are interested, and then finding um, getting the youth, the young women involved. So that's one of the reasons why I want to want to be a wrestling coach, is so I can kind of start swaying the younger women into doing it because everything that fighting has done for me has been incredible you know there's not one bad thing that's come out of it so correct um, and we've I want to be able to do that. fantastic and we have seen a lot of fighters uh during their fighting career itself kind of transition into coaches is that something that you're looking at in a couple of years maybe um i do i do a little bit of coaching now i was doing a lot more coaching in oregon because I, we own the gym, but um, I had, with my bachelor's, I have a bachelor's in health and physical education. I was eventually going to get my um, my master's in education so I could teach PE, health and PE, um, and then from there probably be a wrestling coach, probably in a high school, because I feel like that's, a, that's probably my best age group that I like to work with, but um, right now I'm going through EMT school. Um, I made kind of a last... It in the last couple of months, I decided that I was going to get back into the fire service industry. So okay. um, that's something that I'm going to be able to do and be able to retire. And then with the shift working and, and working 24 hours at a time, I'm still going to be able to, to have a fight career. Right. And make everything work with, with an, a pretty, pretty good income considering, you know, so um, right now I'm going to, I'm going to get back into the fire industry. I'm still going to, continue my education and I'm still going to continue to try to evolve the sport and grow the sport. I think as a mixed martial artist, it's very important that you get back to the community in that, that context. Um, but I don't know what it is. I love going to school. Um, I love learning new things and being able to apply them and, and then in turn, turn around, teach people that kind of stuff. So i um, going to continue education and then see where it goes. That's fantastic. Um, one last question for you. Uh, after your fight, did you have a chance to talk with either Caitlin Young or Julie Ketsy and kind of see what's next for you? Uh, no. The only thing that we I basically talked to them about, it was actually right after I weighed in um, because I was I felt like I was pretty close to death. And I don't think I'm exaggerating either. It was a pretty bad pet. Um, I basically told them, I was like, I think this is my formal request to go up to, to flyweight. So if, if I fight in the future, I'm trying to get on the May 4th card. I told my, my manager for, if we can get a 125 fight in May, then I would love to fight in May. Um, but I do have a grappling tournament in Bend, Oregon for Budo Jitsu. Um, that's May 19th, and that's at 125. So okay. um, I'm not going to be back before then. But I'll be doing stuff in May and then, and then the rest of the summer. But you're going to see me at 125. I don't, I'm not going to be able to, to make continue to make 115. And then really the most defining factor of that too is I've never actually made 115. I, I've used my pound allowance. Right. And I think the lowest I've gotten was 115.6. 
and that was this last time, and it was it was pretty bad. It was bad. Um, so um, I, I don't know if I can lose another half pound for a, for a title. <laughs> right. You know, and- if I I for the the belt, if I know I can't make weight for the belt, then why am I staying in that that weight class? So. Absolutely. Uh, was there any reason why this weight cut was more difficult for you? I'm not, you know, I'm not really 100% sure, but I do think it might have something to do with the fact that I didn't cut weight for a whole entire year. And then it was also in Salt Lake City, which is an elevated, I believe it's 2,500. It's not as high as Denver, but it's up there. Right. Um, so I think um, that might have had a, had a play in it too, because usually... You, when I when I cut for Tiffany, I did the same thing. I did something different last fight um, when I fought Miranda, but I did the same thing I did for Tiffany, and it was it was almost as I almost didn't make weight, which is something that I'm not okay with. I'm, I'll never be okay with that, and I've I've been pretty outspoken about about fighters who don't make weight. Right. So um, it just kind of dawned on me, and I was like, I could be one of those people, you know, and because I'm cutting, I cut down from 130. It's a huge cut, right. and it doesn't feel good. And then, more importantly, the next day I, I'm not recovered. There's no way you can lose, you know, eight a gallon of water from your body and then bounce back from that and be 100. percent So correct. So is it, is it now confirmed that you'll be moving up to 125? I'm I'm sorry, just last question, but is that is that yep. something that's confirmed? That's what I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm not 15 anytime soon. Okay. So, Took that fight, took it pretty easily. It was definitely way stronger than her. I don't see me running into a problem at 125 with strength. And, in fact, I think you're going to see a better fighter because I'm going to be more refreshed, um, more uh, fueled up. And, and really, uh, my striking with Kay was, was terrible. It's like I was just standing there, and I was like, I need to do something. And I'd just get hit in the face, and then, then I'd punch back. And it really had to do with – I just – it was – the only way I can explain it is that I felt like everything, like my world was like hazy, okay. if that makes sense. Like I just had this dull, you know, like I almost died the day before and my body was like, we're not, don't do this, you know, but there's no way I was going to lose that fight. So I said, I'm just going to suck it up for 15 minutes, you know, and, and handle it. But I don't want to do that again. I shouldn't do that to my body. It's not good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, again, we look forward to uh, seeing you fight again uh, inside the cage. And congratulations on your big victory. All the very best uh, for the upcoming fights. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Take care. Awesome. Bye. You have a good day.